Now, there are some in initiatives I want to mention briefly in the legislature. Some of the initiatives to stimulate construction, because remember, construction gives one of the biggest bangs for the buck. Five jobs created for the construction industry, another seven for the non-construction industry. So what we've got here is a bill, HB 12, uh, 1218. It's going to be a county capital improvement project. It's if they put up 50 million, we put up 50 million, followed by the preference for local firms in HB 138. And I'm gonna move through these rather quickly because just to show you that your legislature is attentive to these needs and we want to with President Obama as well as Governor Lingle to be also in the direction of stimulating the economy. We've got affordable housing development uh, bills that we're gonna give incentives. And mind you, this has been one of the most difficult nuts to crack. All of the incentives that we've given have not worked as well as they should. But we're gonna try it again with HB 1083. We also have a no interest loans to the counties that we're going to use as an incentive for development through a revolving loan fund. We also have the affordable housing development <coughs> which moves through to you, the residential owner, where we've got solar water incentives. Now, how many of you out there have a solar water heater on your roof? If I were to guess, statistically, three quarters of you do not have solar water on your roof. This is a bill to create incentives for you to put solar water on your roof. It allows older dwellings to switch to solar and have a reduction in your electricity costs. It allows you to do this with the minimum of pain and to also to get the tax credits. That's the important part. Right now, what's on the books? If you don't put a solar on your roof by December 31, 2009, you don't get any state tax credit. That's wrong. This bill will correct that. The second bill that we're talking about here is HB 1305, which means if you are a solar water manufacturer, if you uh, manufacture panels, if you bring in um, another solar water heater mousetrap, and you manufacture it, not bring it in from the mainland, you gotta manufacture it here, we're gonna give you a tax credit. We want to have the industries here, we want to bring them in, not just bring them all in the way we do with other things like cars and uh, and other parts of uh, basically everything that we have here. We want to have the beginning of a uh, industrial manufacturing enterprise and there's a tax incentive to do that. We also have an incentive for those businesses and I hope some of the businesses of Waikai and Kalama Valley are listening. A new higher tax credit, House Bill 1309, up to $8,500. If you hire new people, keep them for a year and we want you to keep generating those employees, because let's, let's face it, the downturn that we're faced with, the biggest fear is people are gonna lose their jobs. So we wanna give an incentive. We wanna keep businesses open, we wanna keep employers hired, and we wanna make sure there's an incentive to do that. Because as soon as people start shedding their, their employees, that's when we got problems. In 1933, there were 25% of the people unemployed. Right now, we've got 5% unemployed. Let's keep it like that. That's one of the reasons for this bill. The uh, second bill that I've got here under the economic stimulation package was the military industrial park. We just heard that bill this morning. It basically says there are billions of dollars of research money, billions of dollars of defense contracts by which they either are going, flying over us, flying under and around us, but not landing here. And if they do, basically we get the guys who are parachuted in to implement the contract and then they're flown out. We don't have an indigenous military industrial enterprise. Uh, to paraphrase um, President Eisenhower, we need to do exactly what Ike said not to do. Beware of the military industrial complex. We need to form a military industrial complex here, not just welcome our military as visitors and they treat us as kind of like we're hosts, but we have to get our local businesses in the business of of uh, the military, particularly for the high industry, the research base, the high tech stuff, like for example, that is being done on the Pacific Missile Range in Barking Sands on Kauai. Excellent example of what a military industrial complex or a military high tech enterprise would look like. And the last bill is the solar energy uh, bill, which creates incentive to allow individuals and businesses to choose not only solar, but photovoltaic. Photovoltaic is coming and will be as exciting as the iPhone. 
Wait till you see how easy and simple it's going to be and hopefully able to sell your photovoltaic energy back to Hawaiian Electric. All the details are not worked out on that yet, but it's coming. Moving on to the guidelines for a soft landing, what we've got to do are a number of things. And those things are we've got to pass the stimulus package bills at all levels. I know uh, some of the people on my side of the aisle have had a bit of a difficulty with the stimulus package. Quite frankly, I believe fully if we do nothing, we are in trouble. We should not be scaring people to say that we're going to hell in a handbasket. We're just going to be in trouble because of the, the liquidity issue that I said earlier, where people are holding back their money. And because they're holding back their money, the economy gets stalled. And when the economy stalls, it doesn't work. It's happening already in Hawaii. It's happening on the mainland. And unfortunately, it's happening overseas, which means we've got to get confidence back into the system. We've got to get credit back in the system. And these stimulus packages are ways of getting that credit loosened up. We've got, as I said earlier, the President Obama package, less than a billion dollars, less than a trillion dollars that have been put in. It should stimulate, should create jobs. It should keep us going as we are and should be going. But it's where, like in the second law of thermodynamics, energy is neither created nor destroyed. So too money. Money, money, well, I guess you could say money is printed, but it's neither created nor destroyed in terms of all the money that's been out there. Let's face it, we've been rather high in the hog. We've lived through a number of years of prosperity. People have made a lot of money. Now, has that money disappeared? Well, from some pockets to others, but there's still the money out there. And quite frankly, it's those people with the money who are holding on to it. And that's why we've got to keep businesses open and we've got to keep our employers working but it's got to be the confidence level for those people with the money to ease up, let loose of it. And I'm not saying go out and buy a new car. I'm not saying go out and buy a new house. But if it's time in your life and in your job and in your career to buy a new car, go buy the new car. Uh, some of the housing prices now are probably the best they're ever going to be. If you want to pick up uh, particularly houses on the mainland, phenomenal deals. In Hawaii, maybe less or so. But the point is, Liquidity, keeping the money flowing into the economy is very, very, very important. 